Welcome to the ProR screencast. In this screencast you will learn how to get your way around the ProR user interface. Ok, let's launch ProR. The first thing you'll see is that it prompts you for workspace, which is the location on your hard drive where the files are stored. We use the default and ask the system not to ask us again. The next thing you will see is a welcome screen, which is nothing more than the ProR website. Feel free to go there to find more information like the user manual. We close the welcome screen and we get the main view or main perspective of ProR. So the first view I'd like to talk about is the project view on the left hand side where you can see all your projects. You can use any Eclipse projects to store ProR files. So let's create a new project and let's call it Sandbox. And now you see the folder here. You can open it up, there's nothing in there. Let's add a requirements file by going to File, New, Riff Model. Let me resize the wizard so that you can see it on the screencast. Okay, here we go. So you have to select the parent folder, which is pre-selected, and then you have to select the file name. Um, please note that there are two different file formats available the RIF XMI format and the RIF format. We still have a few problems with the RIF format, so we suggest you to use the RIF XMI format for now. By using Safe S, you can easily switch between the two formats. So when you finish, you can see the file here on the left hand side, and it is already opened. In the middle pane of the application, you see an overview of the document that we just created. Um, a RIF file has some general information which you can find under document properties. So if I open it up you can see a title which we can add, pro R demo, you can see the author, a comment, creation time and some more information. Some can be edited, some not. Um, a RIF file can contain a number of so-called specifications which are views on your data. In the specification section, you can see all the specifications in this RIF file and currently there's only one that got created by default. By double clicking it, you can open it and it will open in a new tab. If you're familiar with Eclipse, you know that each tab usually rep represents a file. That's not the case here. So you basically have the main tab here, which represents your file and all the views that you can open and close as you like. So let's have a look. We see that the default um, wizard created uh, one specification document inside our file with one requirement. In Pro R, requirements are organized in rows. Every row represents a requirement. By right clicking on it and selecting a new sibling, you can create a new um, requirements object. So for now, just select the one that has um, um, this icon here and we see that a new row got created and we can just double click and start editing. There's a shortcut for that. If you want to basically create a requirement of the same type, you can just hold down control and hit enter and you'll get a new line and you can start editing right away. Let me do that. I hold down control and hit enter and I'm in the next line and I can start typing. So, so here we already have a few requirements. Let's create a few more. Okay, so this is basically how you work with requirements. It's a little bit like Excel. You see different um, rows and you can enter the information, but of course there's much more to it. Before I go on, I want to show you some more aspects of the user interface. So as I select elements here, you can see that down here in the properties view, we see some more information about it. So this one, for example, you see another line for a demo and you see down here in the properties view that there's also the description and you can add it here as well. Demo. And as I type enter, you will see that the text up here changes as well as you would expect it. There's some additional information for administrative purposes that you don't really know in this little um, tab. I'll expand it and you see an identifier and some more information. 
Okay, so besides editing text by um, double clicking or just hitting a key, you can also rearrange um, the requirements here. So with drag and drop, I can move this further up. And now you can see that this one moved from down here up there. Or well, start editing here is now at the top and it's now at the bottom. So as you would expect it. Now you also have the concept of nested requirements. So for example, if I would want to create a nested requirement here, rather than selecting a, si a sibling, I can also create a child object. So let me do that. And you can see that it is indented. Can get some text. So there we go. So you can see that, that you can create like a hierarchical structure of your requirements. Um, if you do drag and drop, the dropping will only happen on the sibling level. As you've seen before, I drag this up here and it isn't indented. If you want to move a requirement and indent it, you should use cut and paste. So another line, I can cut this one out with Control X or using the edit menu. Cut. And now if I paste it, it'll be pasted as a child object. So you see it is indented. The one view I didn't talk about yet is the outline view on the right hand side, which gives you another view of the structure of your document. So currently we only have one specification, as you can see here, and you can dig further into the specification document. So if I go in here, you can see that the hierarchical structure that's shown here is reflected here. So this is the same structure. Okay. So then you also have the spec objects, which is a flat view of all the objects that you have. You should be aware that these are references. So for example, if you take this object and copy it and then paste it again, like here, this is not really a copy, but it's a reference to the same object, which you can see like this. If I add some more text, The moment I confirm, you'll see that this one changes as well. So you see that these both refer to the same um, to the same actual text. So in your outline view here, you see that this text, this is a child object reference, appears only once here. Where is it? Um, ah, down here. Um, even though it appears multiple times in the specification document. Okay, so obviously just working with one column is not enough for requirements. And there's a whole concept of creating types and more views. And I'm not going to dive into detail here. There'll be another screencast for that, but I'll give you an overview. Up here, you have like a number of buttons that are pro or specific. This one allows you to configure your data types. So, so far we have only worked with this one type, requirements type, and there's only one field called description. It's now possible to add more attributes to this. So typically in requirements engineering, a requirement has an ID. So let's create a new child it's of type simple. And down here, when, once we select it, we can give it a name. So we call it ID. And we can give it a type. Currently we have only one type. I'm not going to talk much about types in this screencast. So I select the one that's available, which is a string, and confirm. If I now select any requirement down here, and I let me collapse this section, you see that here in the requirements type section, now we also have an ID. So I can call this, for example, rec1. However, you'll see that the ID is missing up here. So the specification, the specification view up here only shows a selected number of attributes of a requirement. We can configure which ones to show by pressing this column configuration button. And there you see that we have only one column called description and we can now add another column and call it ID. And this actually is reflected in real time in the view here. 
because we don't like the order, we'd like to have the ID on the left hand side, we can change the order here with drag and drop. And you see it already reordered that. Okay. Let me finish this. And now you basically could provide IDs right here for all your requirements and so forth. Um, so there's one more concept I want to talk about in the screencast and that's the concept of linking. So you can create links between um, requirements which is one of the core concepts in requirements engineering. Linking you also do with drag and drop except that you need a keyboard modifier that tells the system that you're linking rather than moving. And this is platform specific. I'm working on Linux where it is control shift to do. If you're working on Windows or Mac it may be another one. So let's link requirement 1 and link requirement 2 together. So I'll start dragging and the moment you can see the modifier is changing as I modify the keyboard. Now it has like a little link symbol and as I let go you see that in the link column it tells me that requirement 1 has no incoming links and one outgoing link and requirement 2 has one incoming link and no outgoing link which is exactly what I just did. I dragged from requirement 1 to requirement 2. So links in um, Pro R also are objects that can have attributes but currently we do not see the link objects. With this button up here we can enable them. So I click that button and now I see the outgoing links. So requirement 1 has one outgoing link, there's no description and the target of the link is another line for which is basically uh, this one up here. Now obviously we don't like the fact that it shows the text here. We'd rather see the identifier. For that we can configure only on the main view the labels that the system should use. So please beware that you have to go to the main tab to modify these things. We click on general configuration and you see there's one entry label configuration. And right now we see that the default label is the description. We can modify that here and let me resize that so that you can see what's happening. Okay, so we want to add ID. And here's the interesting thing. So we can have multiple default labels. Let me move that up. So in the current configuration what would happen is the following. The system wants to find a label for requirement and tries to find a, an attribute with the name ID. If it finds one it uses one if it doesn't find one, it just moves to the next one and uses that. So let's click on OK, click on Finish, go back to our specification view, and now we basically see that our link here is um, pointing to Rec2 instead of the text. So exactly what we want. OK, the last thing is that um, this I cannot add a description here because this link doesn't have a type. But down in the property view, you see there's a type field and we can pick a type from our type section. There's only one available. I pick that one and as soon as it's picked you can see that I also have a description and an ID. So now I can basically put in here an ID for example link1 and a text. Okay. So this concludes the little demo of ProR. I think you should know your way around the user interface right now. I hope you enjoyed this um, screencast and for more information please visit ProR.org. Thank you very much.